when we're experiencing depression, a part of our nervous system that should be activated, the ventral vagus nerve that keeps us socially connected, engaged, we, we read cues appropriately and accurately, it's not working as well uh, when we're feeling really sad and really down for extended periods of time. And so we're, we're just not able to connect in the same way, to have the same kind of empathy or compassion. And I think the, the non-clinical answer that we all can intuitively understand is when we are not at our best, we just don't have as much patience. We don't have as much internal bandwidth. We don't have as many internal resources to work with. And so that irritability is a lot is a lot more common. And if we're not able to kind of contain that, it's, it's just a matter of time until it comes out. You have um, some advice on how to manage that, how to deal with that. And the first piece of advice you have is to feel your feelings. What does that mean? Yeah, and I, this doesn't come naturally for a lot of us, um, but feeling your feelings is, is really bad. If you're feeling like you want to cry, you should cry. And most of us don't. Uh, if you're feeling like you want to yell or hit something, you should yell into a pillow, hit a pillow. Of course, we don't want to be destructive or abusive. Just being able to use your emotions as, as data and actually allow them to move through you means they will pass more quickly than if we try to stuff them down, which is what most of us do. <laughs> there are also better ways in which we can communicate with other people and, and how we're feeling with other people. You suggest using the eye technique. You also suggest a sandwich technique. Walk me through some of those. Oftentimes it can be helpful to wind up expressing how you feel to another person, if that's a boss, a partner, a friend, a family member, whatever that is. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're handling the anger in a way that it can actually be received and heard by the other party. So using I statements instead of you made me feel angry, uh, it's helpful to say I felt angry when you did X. I felt whatever when you did X. Um, and that allows you to take responsibility for how you feel while also letting the other party know what they did that contributed to the feeling that you're having. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And on the other end of that, you talk about, I've always heard it as the compliment sandwich. Yes. Start with something positive and with something positive. Absolutely. So, so this can be really helpful, um, especially if it can be a sensitive interaction, if you're dealing with your partner over something that you deal with all the time and they're sick of hearing about it, or your boss where you really want to make sure that you're being uber professional. Uh, so this is the idea is that you start with something positive. For instance, if you're talking, if you're angry at your partner for not taking out the trash, again, you can say, you know, I really appreciate that you work so hard to make me happy. I see that all the time. Um, unfortunately, you didn't take the trash out again, and that's really frustrating for me. Um, but I love that I can just talk to you about this, and I know we'll be able to work it out. Positive. Constructive criticism, positive. And sort of wrapping this up on, on other techniques you can use, um, I appreciate that you, you worded it in a way of, are you willing to drink poison for the person who is causing you frustration? Stress in general, but especially anger and rage, they come with an especially kind of toxic chemical makeup in our bodies. When we, when we are feeling angry or rageful, our bodies get flooded with all sorts of chemicals and hormones that ultimately wind up doing damage to our body if, if they stay in there long enough. And so we all get stressed, we all get angry. There's nothing wrong with that. But the important thing when we're feeling that way is that we get back to our baseline. And one of the ways that we can do that is by talking to people. But if we don't get back to our baseline, all of those chemicals inside your body are just doing tremendous amounts of damage over time. And so, so that's why I think the poison analogy is, is a good one. If we're not willing to be advocates for ourselves, to speak up, to be in direct communication with the people around us who are affecting us, it winds up hurting us, not them. So that's something important to think about. And just finally, why is it that we can feel negative emotions when something positive could be happening? It's, it's a change, but it could be a positive change. Our bodies and brains, they all love the same status quo, baseline. Um, our bodies and brains love familiarity. So whenever there is a change, 
that's a disruption to the status quo and our bodies and brains that gets us nervous because back in the day uh, our ancestors were facing all sorts of of crazy elements in their environment and a change could mean life or death, tremendous danger. So our bodies and brains crave homeostasis, status quo. Uh, and so even positive changes are still often received by our bodies and brains as threatening, which is why we just need to stay consistent with whatever we're doing and let our bodies, our very ancient um, brains and nervous systems catch up to the goodness that's there.